What does this firing say more about McDaniels as a head coach or the Raiders as an organization? Well, to me, at the moment, it would say something about uh, Josh McDaniels as a head coach. We all know this is the second time he's had a head coaching job, and he was fired midway through the season. He did it. It happened to him in Denver. It happened to him again in this particular situation. He had to go. Um, the fact of the matter is some people are made to be coordinators. So, you know what, Bill O'Brien, enjoy your last year in New England, and then after that, move aside because Josh McDaniels will be coming back as the offensive coordinator because that's the only place he's had any kind of success whatsoever, even though it was with Tom Brady as his quarterback it'll be a little bit different now but the reality is is that this is all on Josh McDaniels even though Mark Davis there's a lot of shade to throw in his direction remember he wanted Gruden he was forced to get rid of Gruden we have to remember that should have kept Bashadi didn't do that wanted to go out there and get a name to get a name like McDaniels the Super Bowl champion multiple times as an offensive coordinator I can't throw shade on that but the flip side is that you know that you acquire a great receiver like Devontae Adams because this brother wanted to play with his boy, uh, Derek, Carr, Derek Carr. And then you're going to let Josh McDaniels get rid of Carr for Jimmy Garoppolo. And we see the man is leading the league in interceptions. He's an accident waiting to happen. So all of this was inevitable because they wanted this to be Josh McDaniels' team instead of the talent on the team. And it cost the Raiders dearly. And finally, Mark Davis came to his senses and realized what the rest of us have known for quite some time. Josh McDaniel is far better as an offensive coordinator than he is as a head coach. 100%. I'll add two things. First off, don't go to the Belichick tree. Joe Judge, a disaster. Patricia, a, a disaster. McDaniel's a disaster in Denver. His uh, coaches are, do not turn out to be big-time coaches. That's number one. But I'm going to put the blame on Mark Davis. He has done an atrocious job as an owner. He gave 10 years to Gruden. That was way too much. He bailed out of the city of Oakland. He lost any kind of home field advantage he ever wanted to have. He went to Vegas. They have no home field advantage in Vegas. That's a sight for the opposing fan to show up. So it's like it's like L.A. with the Chargers and the, and the Rams. No home field advantage whatsoever. His father lost his fastball long before, uh, you know, his ownership scenario ended when he passed away. And Mark Davis is just not a big owner. I mean, let's just call it like we see it. When I think of great owners in the NFL, I am not thinking of Mark Davis. I would never have brought McDaniels in after the Belichick tree. Obviously, Gruden, he gave him 10 years for Gruden. 10 years. Where did Gruden earn 10 Over years? Over $100 million. That? Over that was a ridiculous 100 million. contract. So, oh, thank you, Stevie. Over 100 million. So, uh, though it's easy to put the blame on, obviously, the, the McDaniels, Garoppolo, go ahead, Derek Carr, bringing Adams in for all that money. Go ahead, pa Dave Ziegler, go pound them into the cows. Come on, I got no problem with that. And Steve made a great point. Pachetti did a great job. They, won, they played great in the playoffs that year against Cincinnati. Could have won the game. They should never have fired him. But I'm going to put it right where it starts, with ownership. Mark Davis is not a big-time guy. If I was a Raider fan, he would not be the guy that I want running my team. That's my point. I'm more in line with, I'm more in line with both of you guys, uh, but more so Mad Dog, because this is a Mark Davis issue. Look, Josh McDaniels had given us <laughs> reasons not to be a head coach in this league before he was hired with the Las Vegas Raiders. The second thing is, you know damn well when you go to Las Vegas, you have to build something with somebody that's going to bring some cachet. I get the name Josh McDaniels, but we know what this usually turns into. There's a, a healthy sample size of what happens with Bill Belichick assistants when they become head coaches, as you just mentioned, uh, Mad Dog. The other thing is this, man. Like, at some point, the, like, I, I get it that you're a billionaire. And I understand that you can make whatever decisions that you want to make with your franchise and your organization. And Mad Dog is one thing I disagree with you about. The Las Vegas can become a Raiders town. You can be a home field advantage. But, yeah. uh, but also to agree with you to your point, it's been so much change and turmoil that they can't even get a foothold in Las Vegas because of that. Like, I think if you build this thing the right way, if you trust the process, whatever that process mm -hmm. is, from some people right. smarter in football than Mark Davis, you could change the outcome. But right now, he's just been flying by night, mm -hmm. hiring names, bringing mm -hmm. people on, hiring a GM off TV. Don't forget about the Mayock situation. All of these things have happened under Mark Davis' watch. So it's not just about Mark. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not just about Josh McDaniels. It's been bad before him. Well, well, listen. A, a, a few things. Number one, real quick. 
Um, I'm not disagreeing with y'all about Mark Davis because since they got to the Super Bowl in 2002, they've only been to the playoffs twice and lost both games. So let's get that out of the way. That's number one. So I understand that about Mark Davis. Number two, Doggy uh, Swagoo shouldn't have to be telling you anything about, about Vegas. I mean, as much as you bet and lose money, you should know better. The fact <laughs> of the matter is, is that when you're in Vegas, all you got to do is make sure you got day games, okay, instead of night games. They'll go to the games and then go to the casinos. Just don't mess with their casino time at nighttime, and they will flock to the games, okay? So we got to get that out the way. Number three, you brought up assistance. Let's be specific so the audience knows what you're talking about here. We're talking about Bill O'Brien. We're talking about Romeo Cornell. We're talking about Josh McDaniels. We're talking about Eric Mangini. We're talking about Brian Flores, Joe Judge, Matt Patricia, and now Brian Dable. All former coaches or assistant coaches under Belichick at one point in time or another. Their combined NFL record, 195-281-2. and two. That's a 41% wow. winning percentage, even though Bill O'Brien had five winning seasons, four playoff appearances, two playoff wins in seven seasons. My very last point is this. The reason why I disagree with y'all is because to me, right now, right now, I'm not talking about totality, but right now, it is about Josh McDaniels. This is an offensive coordinator. This is supposed to be the offensive guru that mm -hmm. was living off of Belichick and, Bill Br and Tom Brady. Well, guess what they are this year? Total offense, 31st. Scoring, 30th. Rush offense, dead last at number 32. Third down efficiency, 30th. And obviously, Jimmy G is leading the league in interceptions. And you had Derek Carr, but you went out and got Jimmy G, your former player with the New England Patriots. And oh, by the way, the GM that left with you, your former dude that was at the New England Patriots. All of this friendship, this nepotism, and all yeah. of that stuff that's supposed to work. Hell no, it doesn't. Maybe they'll stop doing that in the National Football League. Who needs this game more? Is it the Finns or the Chiefs? Uh, definitely Miami. I mean, geez, the Chiefs have nothing to prove. They've won two Super Bowls. I understand that Mahomes has never won a road playoff game. You want to make a big deal about that because they're playing for home field? All right, I guess you can use that. And they're coming off a loss where he was not 100%. He was sick. But this is about Miami. Got buried in Buffalo. Buried in Philadelphia. They have never won a big game outside of beating the Broncos and the Jets and teams like that. In the last two years with Tua, this is not Alabama. He got pulled in the Tennessee game a couple years ago. They had to play Fitzpatrick against the Raiders and the Bills a few years ago trying to make the playoffs. This is about this franchise in a big spot finally getting a big win. Because I understand the Dolphins are fun to watch. I understand Tariq Kills got over 1,000 yards receiving. I get all that. And obviously, you know, listen, if you know, McDaniels is an offensive genius, I understand that too. But in the big spot, Miami is, they got beat on Christmas by Green Bay, which was a bad loss last year. They have not shown me in a big scenario that they can win a game, whether it's defense, whether they can make a big stop, they can go down the field against a halfway decent team and go 80 yards, whether they can outscore the Chiefs. Miami, to me, as a sports fan, much more on their plate than Kansas City. Who's going to sit there and say Mahomes has to win a game? He's one, two, seven. He's like one of the greats of all time. This is about Miami on Sunday morning. <laughs> Mad Dog, you make a compelling argument, but I'm going to go Chiefs, and I get what you're saying about the history, but I'm going to focus in on this year. The Chiefs, to me, still have questions, which is – very rare. I think if it's at any time the Chiefs needed home field advantage, it's this year. Mm -hmm. They are not good at the wide receiver position, bro. They have not figured that part out yet, and I know we throw it all on Pat Plate. Pat will figure it out. They'll get to where they need to be. This team has been they, – they've been struggling now when it comes to that particular situation. So I'm not just focused on needing a game against Miami. I think the Chiefs need home field advantage this year, probably more so than they've ever needed going into the playoffs. They are more unsure about who they are offensively when it comes to this wide receiver group than I think they've ever been since we've been seeing them have a tremendous amount of success. I get it that Miami would love to host playoff games and the advantage that they would have, I understand that. But I think Miami right now knows more about who they are as a football team internally than the Kansas City Chiefs right now with that, with that obvious big part of what they've been so successful with 
and that's Pat Mahomes being able to push the ball downfield. I get it from a history standpoint. Kansas City doesn't have anything to prove. We've seen them win Super Bowls. We've seen them go to all of the AFC championships here in the recent years. But I'm not talking from that context, Mad Dog. I'm talking about this year in particular, the unknowns about Kansas City, I think, puts them in a situation where they need home field in the AFC more so than they've ever needed it. Nobody would be un like it wouldn't be uncomfortable to say that the Baltimore Ravens could get in to go to they have to go to Baltimore and they could potentially lose that game because of what they're dealing with offensively. Cincinnati is starting to emerge. Miami, if they had to play Miami at Miami at that time of the year, what would happen? Buffalo in that situation. Kansas City, to me, needs home field advantage more this year than they've needed it. Swagoo, I couldn't disagree with you more. I think that you are completely lost with this take. And let me explain to you why. First of all, let's get something historical out of the way, Doggy. You'll appreciate this. You remember that 1972 team that Mercury Morris keeps nauseating us over with about how undefeated yes. they were in, 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 in 72 when they won the Super Bowl, they went undefeated. They went back-to-back -back Super Bowls that year. Um, uh, after that, they played in the Super Bowl in 1984 when Dan Marino threw for over 5,000 yards. This is 1984. Dan Marino threw for over 5,000 5, yards and 48 touchdowns when he had Mark Super Duper and Mark Clayton to throw the damn football to, okay? They were big time, no doubt about that. You realize that the Miami Dolphins haven't been back to the Super Bowl since? So let's get that out of the way. They're about to go up against the reigning defending Super Bowl champions who we all anticipate will be in the playoffs. So the word need with Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback, I don't think is applicable here. Let's also add the level of pressure swagoo that we're talking about here. You got Tua Tungavaloa, Leading the league in passing yards and tied for the league in touchdown passes, okay? But what is their record against the, in their six wins? Their six wins, none have come against uh, winning teams. All of them have come against losing teams with a combined record of 13 and 33. That's where all six of their victories have come from. But when they went up against competition in Buffalo, and when they went up against competition in Philadelphia, in Buffalo they got bum rushed. In Philadelphia they got beat. So I'm looking at it from that perspective, and I'm looking at those two losses. All of a sudden, Tua diminishes to 250 yards passing per game with a total of two touchdowns, two interceptions, and he sacked seven times. And, oh, by the way, they've been outscored 79-37. And defensively, they've allowed nine touchdowns in 12 trips to the red zone. All I'm saying to you is this. Let's look at those numbers. Let's take into consideration the level of competition. So when the big boys show up, you can't be found. When the little boys show up, you stomp them. And we're supposed to celebrate that. Well, the big boys are the ones you're going to play in the playoffs or in games like this. That's in Germany, which, by the way, that's a damn miss by the NFL because a game of this magnitude should have been on, uh, on, on, on home turf on the United, in the United States of America. With respect to Frankfurt, Germany, but damn it, I don't give a damn. I want you here in the United States for a game like that. But that's beside the point. At the end of the day, what it comes down to is this. Tua, Tyreek, Waddle, and the crew – Got to show us they can show up when it counts against a team the quality of what you're going to have to face if indeed you're a legit Super Bowl contender. We can speculate all we want about the receivers that either can't get open for Kansas City or can't catch the damn ball when they are. We can definitely lament that, okay? We understand that. You should have probably got a wide receiver if they could have before, you know, before the deadline passed. But in the end, they're the reigning defending Super Bowl champions. There is Mahomes. There is Kelsey. There is Andy Reid. And when we look at it from that perspective, win, lose, or draw, we're not going to throw any shade on them because we know what they're lacking. In the case of the Miami Dolphins, we're looking at you and we're saying, who are you? You claim to be this until the big-time competition shows up. Then we can't find your asses. You got to show up. <laughs> <laughs>